Have you ever played a video game and thought to yourself, hey, I'm a reasonably intelligent and creative human being, I bet I could make my own game? Well, you're not alone. Welcome to Dodgy Dodo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Let's Dev, a video series in which I'll be exploring and documenting my very own game development adventure. I'm going to create a video game from scratch. My aim is to create a complete, professional and above all else fun video game ready to be marketed and released out into the wild. I'm basically going to publicly develop it and show you everything from conception to release party, including all brain farts and stumbles along the way. Creating a video game by yourself or in a small team can be a daunting task. A video game is a final product composed out of many different elements and puzzle pieces. When you're playing a game, you're not just looking at a single piece of art, listening to a song or reading an engaging story. No, you're interacting with the world in which the art, the music and the story are just a few of many pieces that complete that puzzle. If done right, they all come together in a seamless, immersive and entertaining experience. That to me sounds like the ultimate creative challenge. I invite you to join me on this adventure and maybe start your own game development journey. And keep in mind, I'm not an expert or a veteran in the field of game development. I'm just a guy with a hobby who knows his way around computers. This means that the way I do things may not always be the best or most efficient way of doing them. I'll be exploring and learning along the way, and I hope you'll explore and learn with me. If you do decide to follow along, don't be afraid to toss in your two cents so we can learn from each other. Alright, let's not get further tangled up in best intentions and actually get something done. To get started, let's jot down a few things we're definitely going to need to create our game. A few obvious items immediately come to mind. We're going to need a computer with an internet connection, a game engine in which we're actually going to create a game, and on top of that, probably some more software to create some assets in. Since you're watching this video, I'm assuming you've got the first one covered. The complexity of the game you're going to create is going to dictate how powerful your computer needs to be to play it. For this first project, I want to keep the needed specs fairly low. That way most people will be able to play it, even if they're using a so-called potato to do their computing on. This seems to be the logical choice. The more people that can play your game without having to invest in more powerful hardware, the better. A big factor that's going to determine how powerful your computer needs to be to make your game is the software you're using. Some software packages can get really strenuous on your system. If you've ever dabbled in music or video creation, you know it's important to have a system that's up to the task. Whenever a new piece of software is needed for a specific task, I'll discuss the needed specifications with you. I'll try to keep it lightweight and cost efficient so it's more accessible if you're following along with me. This brings us to our next item and an important decision we need to make right off the bat. What game engine are we going to use? Since I'm not a programmer by trade and my coding experience is fairly limited, it's important I use an off-the-shelf engine that fits my needs. Coding one myself is simply not an option. There are many videos floating around comparing all the different game engines. They usually compare the different features and somehow try to decide which one is objectively the best. In my opinion, that's pretty much impossible. I've dabbled in several different engines and found out that mileage may vary and selecting an engine that works for you is a very personal choice. I've played around in Unity, Unreal Engine, Game Maker Studio 2 and Godot. Each one of these engines has a very different focus and workflow. One engine might work better for you than another depending on your needs and goals. If you spend enough time with any of these engines, I'm sure you'll be able to make your vision a reality. It's all about what works for you and the focus of your project. Whichever game engine you decide to use, the most important thing is that you stick with it for your project. Trust me, if you dabble around in several engines and constantly try to translate your project from one to the next just to find the best fit, it's probably never going to get finished. So take your pick and stick with it. For this first project, I'm going to create a 2D game. I think it's a good idea to keep this technically as simple as possible. Adding a third dimension creates a few more layers of complexity both in the creation of the assets as well as the development of the game. Maybe I'll tackle that later down the line, but not yet for this project. For me, this immediately eliminates engines like Unity and Unreal. Sure, you can make a 2D game in them, but they're really designed for a 3D workflow. And I think for what I want to do, they're probably complete overkill. So let's select an engine specifically designed with a 2D workflow in mind. When it comes to 2D game engines, there are a ton of choices. 
Many of them are designed for one specific type or genre of game. Since I have no idea yet what kind of game I'm going to create, I skipped over engines like RPG Maker. Three popular choices are Game Maker Studio 2, Godot, and Construct 3. All three are good engines in their own right that function in a similar way. I decided to pass on Construct 3 and Godot for several reasons. First off, Construct is designed for drag and drop game development without the need for any coding. While this may seem like a big plus in ease of use, it does limit the control you have over your game. If you program your game from scratch, you have complete control over the end result. Granted, they do offer some added control in the form of JavaScript, but the way it was presented, it seemed to be a bit of a tacked on solution. Both Godot and GameMaker Studio 2 each have their own custom programming languages, which I think is a good thing. Now, you might assume that coding your game in an established language like C, -sharp, C++, or Python will always be better. Yes, the knowledge of that language will be more widely applicable even outside of your game project, but because you're using a general programming language, it may be less focused on your specific use case and therefore be either more difficult or more convoluted. Coding your first game in GameMaker language or Godot script is a really good first step into programming. Both of these languages were specifically designed and written from the ground up to work with their respective engine. Another important factor I looked at is the ability to port your games to consoles, like for instance the Switch, PlayStation, or Xbox. Neither Godot nor Construct 3 support this natively. Now you may not need that right from the start and you might be able to work around it, but knowing that the option is supported natively gives me some peace of mind. This logically brought me to GameMaker Studio 2. After a lot of experimentation, I found that GameMaker Studio 2 is the engine I keep coming back to time after time, which for me is a good sign. When it comes to 2D games, GameMaker can pretty much do anything. Each time I experiment with a different engine, I find that I can do the same thing in GameMaker, but probably faster because of all the hours I've already put in it. If I get the same final results, why would I change engines? Now that we know which engine we're going to use, let's install it and get started making our game. Open your favorite web browser and go to yoyogames.com. You'll immediately see a big GameMaker Studio 2 logo in the center of the page and a bright green Let's Make a Game button. Now before we dive right into making a new account, I'd like to take a little detour to the showcase page you'll find in the menu at the top. Here you'll find a huge collection of games that were made with GameMaker Studio. Going over this list, I ran across quite a few awesome indie game titles that I had played before and very much enjoyed. Knowing that these awesome games were made with GameMaker Studio 2 is encouraging. For me, it solidified the feeling that I made the right choice when it comes to game engines. This is also a good spot to browse for inspiration. Alright, back to business. Let's go back to the main page and click on that bright green Let's Make a Game button. On the next page, you'll be confronted with the different subscription tiers. Yes, GameMaker Studio 2 is a subscription-based game engine. So if you're looking for a single, perpetual, all-inclusive license that you can use until the end of time, I'm afraid you're out of luck. The great thing is that YoYo Games does provide a completely free version of GameMaker Studio 2. It's neither time nor function limited, so you can create your entire game in the free version without having to fork over any cash. With GameMaker Studio 2's subscription system, you're basically paying for export options. In the free version, you can develop your game and export it to GXC. GXC is Opera's gamer-centric web browser. This means that if you want to share your game with the world, you can export it to the GXC platform. And people all over the world will be able to play your game in the GXC browser. If, on the other hand, you'd like to sell your game as a standalone product, you'll have to look at a paid subscription. Let's start with the free version and get creative without immediately going broke. I also promise to inform you of the system requirements so you know what type of hardware you need to run GameMaker Studio 2. You'll need a 64-bit operating system in order to install it. Hardware-wise, they don't have any special requirements. The very minimum they ask is a dual-core CPU, 2GB of RAM, onboard graphics, and a hard drive. They recommend a quad-core CPU with 8GB of RAM, any dedicated graphics card, and an SSD. This means that if you purchase your PC or laptop in the last 6 or 7 years, you'll be able to run GameMaker Studio 2, no problem. Because GameMaker is a subscription-based engine, you'll be asked to make a user account you'll need to log in. Even for the free version. There's nothing really exciting here. You'll be asked to give your email address and create a new password. They also want you to promise to them that you're a big boy or girl over the age of 13 and that you both read and agree to the user agreement, privacy policy, and cookie policy. 
Since we're law-abiding citizens who love reading legal documents in their spare time, let's confirm and sign up. Success! You should receive an email from YoYo Games asking you to confirm your email address. Just click the link provided or copy and paste it in your browser's address bar to continue to the next step. When your email address is verified, your account will be activated. Next up is the news preference page where you can sign up for a variety of informative emails. Kudos to YoYo Games for not pre-selecting any of these. I hate having to deselect the list of optional checkmarks. If anything tickles your fancy, by all means sign up, but I'll opt for none here. Up next you'll be asked to provide them with a security question only you know the answer to. Since this is totally my real account, I answered honestly. They do offer two-step authentication, which I highly recommend you activate. Type in your password to confirm your security choices and click save and continue. In the last step before completing your profile, you'll be asked to create a username and provide them with your real first and last names. Which I, once again, answered truthfully, of course. I wouldn't even think about making up a random non-existing alter ego just to create a tutorial video. In the right column, you'll be asked what your skill level is. This is probably just for YoYo Games' own statistics or to customize their newsletters if you signed up for any. I'll leave it on beginner for now and complete my profile. Now we're asked what we want to do next. Since we're first starting off with a free version, we're not going to subscribe or register as a school. Since we haven't made anything yet, we also can't sell anything on the marketplace, and to follow any tutorials, I think we need to download GameMaker first. Since I'm on a PC using Windows 11, I'll download the Windows IDE. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment, in case you're wondering. After GameMaker Studio is downloaded, I open it in my Downloads folder and double-click it to start the installation. After the installer is loaded, you'll once again have to agree to the user license. It's best to select the default installation options, to make sure that GameMaker Studio 2 installs all of the prerequisites and libraries you need to run the engine. Let's click Next. Here you can select the location where GameMaker will be installed. I'll install it in the default location, but you can do whatever you want on your machine. After you click Install, it's a matter of waiting for GameMaker to complete its installation process. This can take quite a while. After the installation process is completed, click Next and Finish. GameMaker Studio 2 will start automatically. First off, you'll be asked to log in. Use the spiffy new account we just created just for this. You can use either your username or the email address you use to sign up. Be sure the Remember Me box is ticked before clicking Login. This way you won't have to do this next time and you can jump right back into developing your game. You'll be greeted with a list of recent projects which, of course, is empty for now. From this page you can start your brand spanking new and scarily empty first project. But we'll get to that in the next episode. If you made it this far into the video, you have my sincere thanks. Please consider leaving a like to encourage me to make more videos, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see how this saga will continue. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Have yourself an awesome day.